It's about to get weird in here. This is actually the deepest living stingray species that's ever been discovered. It's covered with some serious badass armor on its back. Their teeth have been modified into crushing plates, essentially, which are as hard as cement. It is absolutely massive. And there are even reports of these stingrays dragging boats. And we have to talk about the pink manta ray. Hello YouTubes and welcome back to Tully's Marine Tales. But before we can dive into the really weird stuff, I want to see what you guys know. So please hit pause on this video and in the comments below, write down one stingray species that you know off the top of your head. Now, the reason I ask this is because the term stingrays is kind of like a blanket term used to describe a number of different species that lives in our ocean. But I don't actually think many people would be able to name one specific stingray species. So I really hope you guys are going to prove me wrong. And to try and rectify this and to introduce you to some of the crazy weirdness and diversity that exists in the ray group, today I've picked five stranger stingrays that we're going to be covering. And I really hope you enjoy this weird and wild journey. Now the first species on the list is one that I'm pretty sure you guys haven't heard of before and it's called the six scale stingray. This species is actually quite new to science, having only been discovered and described in as late as 1980. But it comes as no surprise that the species was discovered so late because it's one of the very few stingray species that actually likes to hang out in the deep ocean. And it actually lives in waters down to 1,100 meters deep. So that's a kilometer underneath the ocean. And to my knowledge, this is actually the deepest living stingray species that's ever been discovered because the only other species I could find, which is actually called the deep water stingray, only lives down to depths of about 600 meters. So the six gill species like knocks this figure out of the park and kicks the butt of the supposed deep water stingray. But that's not the only thing to make the stingray species unique. It has six gill slits instead of five, like all other stingrays. And it lives a lonely life being the only species in a family called Hexatrigonidae. Now, the reason for this is probably because it lives in water so deep. You know, down in the dark, deep depths of the ocean, there's very little oxygen down there. So this species needs all of the gill slits it can get to get enough oxygen. And that's not even talking about the elephant in the room. Quite literally, this long flabby nose on the front of the stingray's face. Now, scientists don't really know what it uses its nose for because we just don't really know much about the species. We don't know how it lives its life, but it is likely that it uses this nose to dig around in the sand looking for prey. And it also has these crazy protrusible jaws that it can extend out beyond its body, likely in an effort to suck up all of the delicious prey that it sniffs out with its super nose. So there's still a lot we need to understand about the species, but it has undoubtedly earned its place on the stranger stingrays list. Next up on the list is one of my personal favorite species, one that I spent five years working on throughout my master's and PhD, the porcupine ray. Now, this is more of a traditional stingray species. You know, it has this nice round disc shape. It likes to hang out in sunny, tropical, shallow waters down to a measly depth of only 30 meters. And although it has a widespread distribution, it is quite rare to spot one. So you're lucky if you do. Now, what do you think makes this species strange? I'll give you a hint. It's in the name. The porcupine ray, like the land porcupine, is covered with some serious badass armor on its back. The porcupine ray's back and tail is completely covered with razor sharp thorns that will do some serious damage if you accidentally step on one. It also makes him very uncomfortable to eat. Imagine trying to eat an unpeeled prickly pear. It's just not going to be a fun experience. So this is likely why this is the only species of stingray in the world that doesn't have a sting on its tail. You know, so stingrays, they only have a sting on their tail as a defense mechanism. And because this porcupine ray has its very own unique defense mechanism with its razor sharp back, it doesn't need a sting on its tail. So it's kind of lost it along the way. It's also a really chunky monkey, putting on some serious body mass as it gets older. Unlike most stingray species that tend to stay pretty flat as they grow. However, they put this bulk to good use, plowing deeply into the sandy bottoms of the ocean, looking for whatever they can find to snack on down there. Definitely the most badass stingray species of the lot. Next up are cow nose rays, which are technically not stingrays, but are close relative to stingrays and are a species that you may have heard of before, especially if you live in and around Chesapeake Bay in the United States of America. 
This poor cutie unfortunately got a bad rap a couple of years ago when it became a scapegoat for the oyster and scallop fishery that collapsed in this region. A scientific paper was published back in 2007 that stated because shark populations had declined so much, which are the natural predators of cow nose rays, their populations exploded. And so now there were all these cow nose rays eating all of the oysters and scallops, and that's why these fisheries collapsed. So a catchy slogan was created, save the bay, eat a ray, and a huge campaign was punted to try and kill these so-called out of control cow nose rays. Every year competitions were held where people would literally shoot these rays with bows and arrows or club them to death with baseball bats on boats. It took almost a decade, but in 2016, another scientific paper was published that debunked this initial paper. You know, it showed that it was impossible for these cow nose ray populations to have exploded. And thankfully this led to a moratorium on the inhumane fishing practices. But unfortunately by then the damage had kind of already been done. Anyway, that was a big digression and not actually the reason why this species is on the stranger stingrays list, um, but it is an interesting story in the history of the species. But the reason the species is on this list is because of its super weird facial features. I mean, its name again, the cow nose ray, is because it has these two lobes at the front of its head, which kind of makes it look like a cow's nose. Um, but the coolest part is that these lobes can essentially unfurl, which they use to dig in the sand and direct prey into their mouths. I mean, is this not super flippin' cute? But they also have these insane jaws and teeth. You know, cow nose rays are durophagous, which means they eat hard shelled prey, like for example, mollusks or crustaceans or bivalves. And so they need some serious oomph to be able to crush, crush through these hard shells. So their teeth have been modified into what we call crushing plates, essentially, which are as hard as cement, and they use these to crush the shells of their prey. So I promise you, you do not want to be putting your finger in the mouth of the species. Next up is the giant freshwater stingray, and I'm sure it's not going to take a genius to figure out why this species made the stranger stingray list. It is absolutely massive. It's the largest stingray species in the world and the largest freshwater fish in the world, just like fish overall, clocking in at over 2.2 meters wide and weighing up to 300 kilograms. This species is an absolute beast. It also inhabits uh, freshwater rivers instead of ocean ecosystems, and it lives in the rivers and estuaries in Southeast Asia. Historically, it used to have a bit of a wider distribution and occur in different areas, but it's become extinct in a lot of places because of the severe impacts and threats that it faces from humans. You know, unfortunately, fishers catch them in long lines and Understandably, because the species is so big, it is incredibly difficult and time consuming to land and they can bury themselves in huge amounts of mud, becoming almost impossible to lift. And there are even reports of these stingrays dragging boats across substantial distances and even sinking some. So they're really not a fisherman's best friend. So when they're caught, sometimes they're used for food, sometimes they're not, but even if they're not used for food, fishermen will still kill or maim them because of these associated difficulties, which is really, really sad. But I do hope that one day I'll be able to see one of these guys in real, real life. So I hope they're gonna be around for the next couple of decades. Finally, as an honorable mention, we have to talk about the pink manta ray. You heard me correctly, a pink manta ray. Now, manta rays are technically not stingrays. They're in a family closely related to stingrays, kind of like the cow nose ray. And as I'm sure you guys know, they're usually dark on the top and white on the bottom with a couple of spots to identify individuals. However, there's one show off who likes to hang around the Great Barrier Reef. His name is Inspector Clouseau, the world's only known pink manta ray, affectionately named after the pink panther. It was first discovered back in 2015, and at the time, photographers and divers and scientists thought there was something weird going on. Their camera equipment must have malfunctioned or something, but no, no, no. It's really a pink manta ray, and they've done some genetic skin samples, and scientists have actually discovered that this flamboyant pink color is likely related to a genetic mutation in the skin of this animal. Such mutations are fairly common in nature. Think of something like albinism, but there's one variant of this genetic mutation called erythrism, which can give skin a pinkish or reddish hue, yielding 
the pink manta ray. And even though sightings of him are really rare and only a handful of people have seen him in real life, unbeknownst to him, Inspector Clouseau has become an online celebrity given his flamboyant and unique coloring. And so he really deserved a spot on the Stranger Stingrays list. And that's a wrap. I really hope you enjoyed this dive into the weird and wonderful world of stingrays and their relatives. I love learning about stingrays. I've been researching them for, you know, almost a decade now and I still learn new stuff about them. They're just these incredible ocean animals with so many cool fun facts about them. So I really hope you learned something, you enjoyed this video. Let, let me know down in the comments below which species was your favorite. And until next time, I hope you all have a very happy day.